everyone. Welcome back to the Light and Life podcast, conversations on faith and life in downtown Colorado Springs. I'm your host, Liza, and roll up your sleeves because today I am with Pastor Tim McConnell talking about Christianity and politics Ooh, as boy. we go into this Ooh, election boy. season. Yeah. Here we go. Everyone, it's about to get spicy. It's getting spicy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, today we just want to talk about how Christians should approach politics. Yeah, yeah. Thoughts. Thoughts? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, hammer Thoughts? away, Tim. Hammer away, let's Take go, it. right? <laughs> yeah, it's good to be with you, Liza, and um, it's good to, to raise up this topic. It's it's one of those things, right? That mm-hmm. it, And everybody wants to talk about it, but everyone doesn't want to talk about it. It's, everyone wants to know who's voting for who. Who's voting for who. We're in an election season, you know, again, and so it's time to... Um, to exercise your responsibility as a citizen, <laughs> right? Right. Do you vote every time it comes around? Um, yes. Yes. The na- nationally, yes. Okay. Locally, on um, local elections, in between the four years. Isn't cycle. that funny? Like the like you look at a list of names. Like, I don't know any of these people. Like for judges and stuff. I know. Well, since I've started to work. Yeah, you work in the city. I work with a bunch of different people. I work with a bunch of different campaigns. I've started to realize how much it does matter. Yeah. And so what I'm struggling with, though, is my ballot keeps being sent to the wrong address. It's Uh my old address. So I don't know if it's been received or not unless I go by there. Oh. Isn't that a bummer? I tried to forward all my mail, and then they sent me a mail package to confirm yeah. my and i was like well what's the point of that why yeah i get another piece of mail to confirm my ma- it doesn't yeah. make sense to me uh-huh. it's the math isn't mathing i don't know um <laughs> but i would like to say i vote yes. um as much as i can because it's drilled into my head from a elementary school song okay um in my music class wow do you want to hear it? Is this a... Uh, <laughs> yes, I do. Oh, gosh. I was hoping you'd be like, you can save that. <laughs> it's like, V-O-T-E vote. Oh. V-O-T-E vote. Get up on your easy chair and V-O-T-E vote. Nice. Oh, v- so every election year, we would sing that song and learn about our rights. Nice. <laughs> nice. As a U.S. citizen, to have your vote, your voice be heard. Yeah. So that's awesome. And that was a Catholic you. school. Catholic school. Catholic school. Mm-hmm. Get out there and, yep. Yeah. Get up right. off your easy chair. Get up off your easy whatever chair. Whatever that means. Because whatever you're doing, if you're not voting, you are. You're in an easy chair. You're sitting in a an lazy easy, boy. A if lazy you boy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. I think it's, well, it's so hard, isn't it? I mean, mm-hmm. um, it's uh, as Christians, how do you approach it? As a follower of Jesus, I want to be. Um, I want to follow Jesus through this part of my mm-hmm. my life. I want to know, uh, I want to walk with Jesus through this responsibility that I have. And so that's what we're going to talk about. I, yeah. I um, Spoiler alert, this will not be me revealing my mm. my personal side or not politics. Not even for me. Or not even for <laughs> you. <laughs> because, and that's, that, that is important. Different pastors approach this in a different way, but... Um, I know that uh, my primary vocational call is to be the shepherd of a large body of people, and people have different ideas about uh, mm-hmm. what the right answers are, which lever to pull in the old days, which button to push, which party to be supportive of, mm-hmm. and um, and the kingdom of God is bigger than that. Mm-hmm. So um, a pastor needs to represent that there's there's life that's so much bigger than the two the two political parties that are currently mm-hmm. vying for influence in our country, in our time, like in the big picture, that's so, so small. Mm-hmm. And um, and the other thing is, too, that I have found that um, as I speak with non-Christians or with skeptics, they see the church, because they can't really see the spiritual dimension sometimes or mm-hmm. they don't they don't really genuinely believe that the spiritual dimension is worth all of this attention and time and devotion they don't really know that god is there they don't really have confidence that jesus came and died and rose again from the dead or that the holy spirit is active or they don't, the kingdom of god is a real thing so what do they see they see people gathering up 
down in some building, you know, downtown, doing some rituals and leaving with a shared mindset on life. And so they think that that church is actually just a, a show and that the real thing that's happening is is politics. Mm-hmm. The real thing that's happening under the veneer, with the glaze, is is a political activity. And especially when it comes out, like people are talking about voting blocks and they talk about the Christian right or the the you know the the, the progressive right. left or and they think they associate these things with um, with churches, I just get time and time again like, oh, the real thing that you're doing is politics, or the real thing you're doing is money. Oh, that's hard. That's a hard thing to balance, especially if it comes comes back to politics in the U.S. realm, where it's like yeah. Jesus is so much bigger than any of that, like than yeah. a political party. Right. right. I don't know. Yeah. Oh. So, so you don't want to you don't want to feed that lie. Mm-hmm. Like so. Oh, so that's. So you don't want the church. There's an agenda behind your teaching. Right. Of, yeah. Okay. And so anything sort of comes through, some kind of little hint comes through, and ah, that's it. That's really what you're doing. You're really just amassing political power down here, or you're really just amassing uh, money down here or something. Mm-hmm. So I'm very careful about that. Yeah. But we're, we're, we're citizens of, of our country. Uh, we're citizens of the kingdom of God. We also want to be good citizens of the and the scriptures have a lot to say about that. Mm-hmm. Like the scriptures talk about honoring the the government and the powers and giving honor to where honor is due and respect to where respect is due. Jesus, of course, famously uh, took up the the coin and said, "Whose face is on this coin?" You know, and and they said, "Well, Caesar's face is on it." And he said, "Well, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's." By which he was saying, which is such a mic drop moment. I it, gotta say, it is. It is a mic drop yeah. moment, and it's, you know, people don't realize sometimes how much that one sentence became the basis of Western civilization mm-hmm. and, and the the balance of powers and the difference between the church and the state. Mm-hmm. And um, but here we are, and we're we're meant to participate, uh, so we have to we have to vote, don't we? Yeah. yeah, I think so. I think, um, oh, yeah, I, I need to be careful when I speak here. Yeah. Everyone have grace for me, please. I had someone say to me, I don't understand how you can be a Christian and vote who you're so and so. For. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've heard the opposite be true of the opposing candidate. Right. How can you be a Christian and vote for so-and-so? Exactly. And I think that thinking is just so flawed um, because realistically, the church is universal, first of all. Let's take, you know, U.S. politics is small compared to you know, a kingdom mindset. Yeah, kingdom of God. Yes, we want to make mindset. informed decisions based on what we think is right or wrong in good conscience. But I think categorizing a specific candidate with Jesus is giving those candidates entirely too much power. Yeah. that Jesus is way bigger than any of us, any decision that we could make. Um so yes, I think you should vote. I think you should vote to have your voice be heard and to make a decision in good faith um, that Jesus is con- in control and can work through yeah. leaders and work in anyone's life. Yeah. But I don't think. Um, yeah, it gets you very know, it comments gets... like you're voting for this and you're a Christian is right conducive to it's only creating division you know like i feel like there's division between denominations in christianity right when really we should be focusing on the fact oh we're both christians like yay unity right yay peace Finding just that. smaller mm-hmm. ways to divide people who already have common ground yeah and i think people want to, I mean, people, we just have a tendency to jump, what I call jumping into our foxholes. Like as soon as the first shot's fired, 
everybody jumps into their foxholes mm. and starts firing in opposite directions. And actually, Jesus never jumps into those foxholes. He just he stays out there in the middle of the battlefield where the bullets are whizzing by, and he just calmly says, life in me is a lot bigger than both of these positions. Yeah, it's kind of like the Sabbath when he's... What were they doing? Fishing on the Sabbath? Or they're doing something on the Sabbath? Eating grain. Yeah, yeah. and he's basically like, I'm Lord of the Sabbath. What right. are you guys doing? Right. Like, why are you trying to accuse me of doing something? Right. I don't know. So people jump in and they and they just, they want to be right. I mean, we want to be right. We, we like to feel right. And we like to feel like we're surrounded with other people that have our same ideas. And, and these tendencies... Um, they can cause us to create idols out of our political parties and our political stance because we feel like we're gaining confidence when we feel right about something. And so, like anything, like the big... So I just, in, in, as a Christian is approaching this, how do I do this? How do I pray through this? How do I talk through this? My first advice as a pastor is go back to the big, big first principles. Like what what is life about? It's very clear in Scripture. Life is about love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So everything that we do from a Christian ethics perspective, it's got to be rooted in that matrix of love and devotion to God and his truth and love and devotion to our neighbors and their well-being. And, and then that, you know, the big thing, you know, that we're fighting against was what— God said very first in the Ten Commandments was have no other gods before me. And then second was make no idols, make no graven images. And we can make an idol out of anything. And it's very easy to make an idol out of our our politics mm. and uh, and just believe that if I worship this thing enough, if I did sacrifice this thing enough, this thing will solve my problems. And the truth is that as wonderful as it is to be in a democracy— where we get to vote, you're never going to get to vote for a perfect candidate. Like, you will, you'll never in your life have a candidate in either party that steps forward and, and you realize and you think this is the perf, this is perfect, this mm-hmm. is the perfect representation of the kingdom of God. <laughs> it's not going to happen, right? Yeah, because we're all human. It'll always be a compromise, mm-hmm. um, and so you're going to have to apply wisdom to the situation is the point that I'm that I'm making. Yeah. I mean, do your so your friends are having a hard time figuring out or does it feel like should I vote? Does it matter? Um, I think some people are like I'm not going to vote because I don't, you know, I don't feel right either way. Yeah. Um I don't necessarily agree with that. Yeah. You know, just because you should exercise the the dem- the right of of voting in a democracy, you mean? Or- I think so, but you know, from I I understand where they're coming from. I just think not doing anything means you don't really have a say in. Yeah, you're you're. <laughs> don't complain about the outcome if you don't. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yep. And maybe that's controversial of me to say, I don't know, but um I think my generation um and I maybe I'm extending that too far in saying my generation. I'd say my immediate circle of friends there is controversy around it. Yeah. Um there's divisiveness um around it and I think the solution is to just not touch the subject. Yeah. And that makes it harder too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it, either way, it's consuming your thoughts, your conversations, your relationships, and what's going on. And right. then it goes away for a little bit for four years. <laughs> kind of, <laughs> you know, but, not always. Yeah. But, but but that's the thing is that like people are making everything politics, right? Yeah, Pop- it's it's all consuming. It's all consuming. Mm-hmm. Like my. What car I buy, what clothes I wear, what sandwich shop I go to, mm-hmm. like politics is consuming so much mm-hmm. of our lives. So, how does a Christian go about it? Like, what categories? It, it, how, how, as Christians, what categories should we think about? You know, to to approach uh, responsibly 
voting, responsibly participating in politics. Because I do believe Christians should participate in politics. Mm-hmm. I support, you know, if a Christian comes to me, if, if I think it's important for a pastor to represent the kingdom of God and to keep things bigger picture than... Mm-hmm. But at the same time, someone comes to me, um, I've got a friend who's, whose brother, you know, a member of our church, and their brother is running for Congress, and mm-hmm. like, you, got, you go. I mean, go. Partic- we need Christians involved in the halls of power, just like we need Christians involved in every sphere of our, of our lives. Mm-hmm. And so I would never say that Christians should just withdraw and just say, oh, it's too divisive, or it's too emotional, and it's, or it's too difficult to engage in. So, mm-hmm. so I guess it's like, how do you advise a Christian? How, as a Christian, do you approach uh, voting? What kinds of categories do we think about? I don't know. What's most important to you? Do you, if you don't mind my asking, um, without revealing your. Hmm. Oh gosh, I don't even know how to how yeah. to say what say what I'm thinking without revealing. Yeah. Um, I think it comes down to like right and wrong. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Um. And I'm not saying anyone has it right. Hmm. But on matters of morality, uh-huh. um, yeah, am I? It's it's important. There's to, there's moral and ethical, yeah, situations um, that I just don't see a One gray bit, area in. Let me put it this way. Well, let me let me say this first because this is my first point of guidance is mm-hmm. that idea of of loving your neighbor it leads for a Christian it should lead our political endeavors and strivings toward a place of pursuing a common good. So the discussion that we're trying to have is a loving discussion with neighbors mm-hmm. about what together is our best future what Mm -hmm. how do you see the future of our of our city how do you see the future of our nation the future of our world and that's a great like that's a great discussion to have and Mm -hmm. it should be one that as christians we should be able to um to not get totally swallowed up by the emotion uh, but to have a genuine discussion with a friend with a neighbor with a relative about Man, how do you see the future? What do you think would be uh, the best for the most? What would be the common good? And that has almost disappeared from politics. But I believe as Christians who want to do everything under the auspices of loving God and loving neighbor, that's a way to get into the conversation, I think. Um, But when you go to vote, you're always going to be compromising and so, um, if I can put it this way, maybe this is what you're getting at. You're putting a person into leadership. You're entrusting leadership and influence in, especially in a presidential vote or a vote for a particular leader in the executive branch. You're, you're putting a person into leadership. And so, from a Christian perspective, character matters, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would say character. Yeah, I mean, we have a note written here. Character matters, but policy is more important. And then the other side, yeah, or sometimes the other side. It's, it's then, nice if it's if it's not the other side. But uh, but also, yeah, policy. That's, that's that discussion of, well, what's going to do the most good for the most people? Mm-hmm. Um, what's going to be the, the thing that will... What are the policies, the platforms that are being put forward that will benefit um, the common good. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's where you can really get into meaningful conversations. Mm-hmm. Well, and I, yeah, no, what I'm going to say. Yeah. I can't say what I want to say. <laughs> it's so hard to, um, to, to um, not, yeah, to not, because it is a political dis- discussion, but. Um, right. Yeah, there. I feel like there's no in politics lately. There's no common ground on a lot right. of issues or compromise. I feel like it's all blame. It's all negative. There's right. no nature of encouragement or like 
collaboration. It's all like, this person stinks, here's why. And no, this person stinks, here's why. They're worse than me. And vice versa. It's no like it's become championing ideas. Yeah, there's no championing of ideas. There's less and less of it. It's <laughs> it's it's two personalities uh -huh. um, arguing about which one is worse, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that that's that's um, so. Let's say we're going to be mature Christian disciples about this. <laughs> let's say <laughs> let's, yeah. let's 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 for yeah, the sake of game. argument. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's just pretend. <laughs> <laughs> that that we want to be Jesusy about this, and we want to actually enter our discussion of the common good with our neighbors as, as we think Jesus might, mm -hmm. you know, um, then we're not going to just get into a mudslinging competition about who's worse. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Is it's yeah, and yeah. I'm not saying if I were in political power any better. If I am ever running for politics, y'all watch out. What. Yeah, Lord help you, because I am not the right person. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm just wondering where that went. Where did it? Well, yeah, <laughs> there's some great books. Oz Guinness has written some a great book called The Case for Civility. Um, there's some wonderful Christian writers who are doing work on on uh, on where has this gone? Where has this level of discourse gone? And I think as Christians, we can be people who are willing to try to bring that level of discourse back. Like, let's talk about uh, how to love God and how to love neighbor and how politics, our practice of politics, might be an expression of that. Hmm. And, um, and then you'd say, well, what categories as believers are most important? Um, I always think that as I'm... Uh, participating in my city and in my county and in my state and my, and my nation, that I, I am there as, because I'm a believer, because I'm in Christ, I'm there as an emissary, as a representative of what's coming, which is the kingdom of God. That's the other thing for Christians is we, like people who don't have a perspective on Christ and on eternity and the kingdom of God, this is it. Like fighting over this, like that's all you got. Mm -hmm. fighting over my right to do this or not your right to not do that. That's all you got. So this that it gets so animated. So a Christian can say, deep breath, <laughs> the governance of Jesus is already at work and is growing and will win the day, and his government will increase forever and ever. There will be no end to the right governance of the kingdom of God under Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so that's coming. So whatever we're fighting about right now is really temporary. Uh, and that just sort of can take some of the fire out of, out of it. Yeah. But uh, as an emissary of the kingdom of God, to participate in politics and a political discussion, I want to be arguing or sharing my ideas that the common good should reflect... The kingdom of God as Jesus has disclosed it. Mm -hmm. So do I understand what he has said of the coming kingdom of God? Because I believe that the greatest good for the greatest number will be a close reflection of the kingdom of God. Like mm -hmm. I should try to vote towards things that I think Jesus will have in place in the eternal uh, kingdom. Does that make sense? Totally. So for me as a Christian, like one of the earliest categories for me um, was that category of, um, of pro-life. You know, so as a Christian, I remember learning about, um, I mean, Jesus in the womb and you know, that's those sorts of things. Like there are passages about, I've, I've stitched you together in your mother's womb. And, and mm -hmm. uh, in Jeremiah, he says, I knew you before you were born. And so I've always reflected that I think, you know, I understand the the, the difficulties uh, and situations that someone can get into um, and have grace and understanding and compassion and mercy uh, for those situations and not just be judgmental about someone getting into, um, you know, crisis pregnancy. But mm -hmm. I love the, the work of crisis pregnancy centers um, because they really come alongside someone in a difficult place and they really yeah. try to make, just make life better. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's an argument that, that should 
in one way or another enter in as you're as I'm measuring policies that reflect the kingdom of God. Uh, is life cherished um, from conception to 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 final death? I mean, right. what's the position of of life? Um, yeah, that's so. That's one category to talk mm-hmm. about. And then the other side of it would be, well, are, are we pro life all the way? Like, are we are we aware of caring for people in difficult situations through the crises of life mm-hmm. and the needs that they have? And are we aware of, you know, um, how thoughtful and and um, and uh, Christianly and engaged are we with questions of warfare yeah. and how warfare is conducted? Like, if we're going to be stand on principles of life, we need to stand on them all the way, all the way through, all the way up and down. thousand percent. Yeah. Oh, that's such a hard one to, um, to discuss with other people, Mm -hmm. um, in a way that expresses your true intention of loving and caring for people. Loving God and loving neighbor. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, because either side of the spectrum, whether it is pro-life or warfare, both sides can argue that they truly are trying to love neighbor in what they think. That's right. You know. Um, so it's a place to have a discussion. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, I think that's one area. I think, you know, another category is just what is business? Like what is business a good or is business a necessary evil? I mean, and there are there are scriptures to go and to study about, you know, what does it mean to um, put your hand to the plow to uh, to make something of the world, to create mm-hmm. something, and and to create culture uh, through our use of our talents and our gifts, and and um, how you know God calls us to to use our our gifts to create something good. Well, is that are you talking about a business, a corporation? Is that a good? Or is that just a necessary evil? And if we could do away with all of that, life would be better. That's one of those areas mm-hmm. where you get into a good, you can get into a good, deep Christian conversation right. and get in some scriptures. My brain's spinning a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> just on, on that one in yeah. particular. Because ultimately, everyone wants to find purpose in work. Right. Say they become really successful utilizing the gifts that they've been given is that bad right um i think kind of like what we talked about in last episode like life each day is a gift and a responsibility yeah i think the same goes for your gifts and talents your gifts and talents in business Mm -hmm. right Um, right it's a gift and it's a responsibility how are you going to love people and um, help people enter into the kingdom with those gifts and talents and successes, your highs and your lows. How are mm-hmm. you going to glorify God? Yeah, and with do something that. with what God's given you. Yeah. And, so and, it, and be driven to do your best. Mm-hmm. And um, which kind of leads to another one, another category, which is for Christians, we should be asking uh, what level of government intervention in life is is necessary. It's clear in Scripture that government is God's idea, that we are a people who are made to be governed and, and, um, and to have oversight mm-hmm. over us. Uh, Romans 13 is a great passage there of, that God has appointed all the, the, the power that's over you is there to, to bring order. And um, what, what are the, what's the necessary range of intervention of government to keep our lives in order and to keep things um, running, you know, kind of smoothly and and to exercise neighbor care in a world where, uh, look, if things were left to run rampant, our worser nature would do a lot of harm to ourselves Mm -hmm. and to others. So what's the necessary intervention of government? The environment's a big one. And Christians need to get into good discussions about that. Like, what what is our role in the in, in taking care of what God created? Is it disposable? Is it something that God has put into our our care that we're supposed mm-hmm. to steward? Um, obviously, those questions come up. And uh, but I think ultimately, it really is about how will this policy, like I've said, produce the greatest good for the greatest number, or 
more simply, how will this impact my neighbor? We often go thinking of ourselves, and that's fine. We're each individual citizens. That's part of the question that democracy asks is, what do you think? Uh, how will this be for you? But we also ought to go as Christians into the polling booth thinking of, of how will this impact my neighbor? How will this be an expression of love for my neighbor? If it works out this way, will that be positive or negative for those around me? Hmm. Um, and then my last bit is just to always <laughs> remember in a political discussion as a Christian, the person you, in front of you that you're talking to is an eternal soul. And so we have a tendency to diminish one another, to demonize one another, Absolutely. to hop into our... Um, our uh, foxholes and start firing at one another and just want to win. Like, I just want to win that fight, you know? I want to yeah. walk away knowing that you're a... Totally. Wait, no, that I'm awesome. I want to walk away knowing that I'm awesome and I won. And and as a Christian, you're, you're an eternal soul talking to an eternal soul. And that person who's in front of you, your soul, Liza, will last in eternity. The, the entire kingdoms of this world don't last that long. Entire nations, cultures, arts, civilizations, they are mortal. The soul, the human soul is immortal. And the way we treat one another sends us either into God's blessing or can send a soul fleeing from God and into cursing. And our treatment of one another as neighbors is always more important than the, the convincing to get a vote to happen in an election a couple months from now. So to remember, to see one another as God's creation, the image of God in front of us, to honor one another as eternal souls, that is critical. And if Christians just did that over the next couple of months, the impact would be enormous. That's very helpful. Thank you, Pastor Tim. Amen. And that about wraps up our time in this episode. As always, if you're enjoying these conversations on Faith and Life, please leave us a review so that more people can find us. If you're watching the video version on YouTube, please leave a comment. And if there's a topic you'd like for us to discuss, please email podcast at firstprescos.org. And we'll look forward to seeing you in the next time when we have the Meet the Staff episode with Chris Owenby. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you guys in two weeks. See you guys.